and welcome to this lecture on chemical process modeling and simulation. Starting from this lecture, we are going to over the course of next few lectures come up with a general framework for deriving the various conservation equations. As a prelude to that general derivation, we take the simplest conservation equation which is the conservation of overall mass and we are going to present that in this lecture. This conservation of mass is also known as continuity equation. You have learned this in various courses starting from fluid mechanics to transport phenomena. Consider an arbitrary control volume V which is enclosed by a simple surface S. At any point on the surface, the surface is defined in terms of the direction of the curvature by its outward normal to the surface. If S is a function of x, y, z, you could consider any coordinate system. For the sake of simplicity, I have just mentioned Cartesian coordinate system. Then the normal to the surface is defined by the unit vector along the direction of the gradient of that function at that particular point. So if you were to consider a small surface element whose small area, you know, infinitesimal element, the infinitesimal area, the magnitude is ds and the direction at that point for that surface is uh, given by the, the normal outward normal. Then if you consider that surface element ds vector, the ds vector would be n times the magnitude which is the surface area of that infinitesimal element. Right? Now we ask ourselves what is the rate at which mass of a fluid is flowing out of the control volume or leaving the surface. We are looking at going out because the uh, normal is pointing outward. If it is coming in, then the, the sign will have to be changed. That's all. So when we are looking at net rate of mass, in other words, fluid, remember we are looking at this whole analysis from a continuum perspective of a fluid right so net rate of mass leaving the control volume through the surface now for that we consider what is the amount of fluid that is leaving that small surface element first if the mass flux is rho into v this is by convection right this is the convective mass flux v is the volumetric flux v itself is Velocity field itself is volume per unit area per unit time, meter cube per second per unit area, which is meter square, so meter per second. Multiplying by density, we get basically mass flux. If V is the velocity of the fluid at ds, then the net rate of mass flow through that elemental area is simply given by the inner product or the dot product of the two. Um, vectors because this is a the rho v is the flux and ds is the area so uh, flux times area will give you the rate so that means since your uh, ds uh, vector is given by the unit normal vector n outward normal vector n as the direction multiplied by the magnitude which is the uh, scalar magnitude ds Right? So then therefore the dot product is between the outward normal vector and the velocity field. In other words, we are looking at the component of the velocity of the fluid flowing along the direction of the outward normal. In fact, I could take this, um, that would give you the net volume of the, of the fluid flowing out. Now, since we are looking at net rate of mass of the fluid flowing out, rho v is the vector, right? That is the mass flux vector. 
So the component of rho v along n, along the outward normal, of course, multiplied by the ds, the area of that uh, element. Right? So if we then have to find out what is the net rate of mass leaving the control volume through the, the entire surface s, which encloses the volume, but then we have to integrate over the entire surface which basically means we get a surface integral of rho v dot ds or surface integral of n dot v multiplied by rho ds. Now, since by mass balance, there are no source or sinks for mass, the overall mass, this net rate of mass of fluid leaving that volume must be equal to the net rate of change of mass in the volume since there is no way overall mass can either be generated or consumed in that control volume so this is the only way that you know that uh, that can the, the total mass can change is by either entering into the volume or by leaving the volume that means the rate at which the amount of mass changes inside that control volume must be equal to this net rate of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mass of mass of the fluid leaving the, the control volume and therefore in other words this surface integral which is which is n dot v which is n dot v rho ds this surface integral tells us basically the net rate of mass leaving the, the surface and that should be equal to the rate of change of mass per unit volume, uh, which is the density, integrated over the entire volume. So this is a volume integral or a triple integral, right? And the negative sign is uh, indicated indicative of the fact that the left hand side captures the rate at which fluid is leaving the the control volume and therefore the total amount of mass should decrease with time and the rho dot t is simply the the change um, of of the density with respect to time the negative sign is written here as in terms of the sign convention to indicate that that the uh, fluid is leaving the control volume now on the right hand side you have a uh, volume integral on the left hand side you have a surface integral so in order to convert the surface integral to volume integral we use gauss divergence theorem which basically says that double integral a surface integral of n dot q ds is the same as the volume integral of del dot q of dv where q is any quantity whose surface integral and volume integral are calculated so in other words basically the uh, the net rate of efflux or outflow of the quantity q through the surface essentially captures the divergence of that quantity in that entire control volume that's what gauss divergence theorem shows and this basically gives the physical significance of the idea of divergence. That divergence essentially captures the net efflux or the net rate at which a quantity is leaving a control volume through the surface that encloses the control volume. Therefore, if we substitute this term into the uh, mass balance that we have written, so the volume integral of dou rho dou t all right, in the control volume is equal to the negative of the volume integral of the divergence of mass flux in that control volume. This basically leads us to what is called the continuity equation. If the, uh, the right hand side is brought into the left, left side and the, the integrands are, are put together, We should get this. Now, however, 
the choice of the control volume was throughout arbitrary. So in other words, this equation should be valid even for a point or even for the limit of V tending to 0. This means that the integrand which is enclosed in the square brackets must vanish everywhere in V. In other words, this, this integral equation is not satisfied be simply because dou rho by dou t plus del dot rho v is positive at one point, uh, one side of the volume and negative at another side of the volume and they cancel each other. It is that at every single point in the control volume, this integrand must be trivially zero because this whole idea of the control volume was an arbitrary choice. So I could shrink this to any point inside the control volume also and there also at every point in that uh, region in, in every, every single point in the control volume also this equation this integral should vanish and therefore simply that by by that argument I can then claim that the integrand must vanish everywhere in V that gives as this continuity equation or the conservation of overall mass. In other words, in other words, if the mass flux rho v diverges or converges at, a, at any point, it causes mass to flow suddenly faster or slower at the infinitesimally adjacent point. When I am saying converging, what is happening from the previous, from a, from a broader cross section, I am converging to a smaller cross section. So I am like pushing more mass to flow into a, a smaller point. If I am diverging, then the opposite is happening. So essentially, if I am pushing more mass into a, a given volume, the density should increase or if I am pushing uh, uh, more mass out of a volume then the density should decrease therefore when the mass flux diverges or converges accordingly density will increase or decrease if the mass flux diverges density will decrease if the mass flux converges then the density will increase that is what this continuity equation indicates to us in Cartesian coordinates if you were to write the velocity vector as Vxi plus Vyj plus Vzk and using the definition of the gradient operator in the Cartesian coordinate system, then this becomes the continuity equation or the equation for overall mass conservation in Cartesian coordinate system. So that brings us uh, to the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, as always, you are free to, uh, please feel free to uh, you know leave them in the comment section of the YouTube channel or feel free to contact me I'll be very happy to clarify any questions you may have thank you for listening to this lecture and have a wonderful day